morning, good afternoon, good evening. Mi mae Rosado, mae le transporte su moneda coin. Today, I want to talk to you guys in this video about something else. Different of coin, and uh, this is something that should worry about everyone. Everyone that have a kid, everyone that uh, live around, everyone that is life in the whole world. All right, guys, we're gonna talk about music. Music is very big because we all, no matter what, we all hear music. It could be rock, hard rock, it could be Contemporary music, we all hear music. Me, I'm a musician, all one, and uh, I could give you a story about this. From the beginning, I was in a high school, and uh, my father was a Christian, and we all used to go to church. My family, I have uh, three of my brothers, they are pastors, and uh, I'm not following any religion yet right now. But uh, when I was in uh, probably in the eighth uh, grade, I was around uh, 10 to 11 years, and uh, I wanted to play guitar. Well, to be playing a guitar, it was very hard. Uh, we didn't have economic to buy a guitar. So I started to be a shoe shine when I was about uh, eight years, and I went over to the Air Force because I was focusing that I want to be a pilot sooner or later. And I started to go there, and I make a layaway of a very little guitar. The guitar that I bought, I'm gonna show you something. It was probably around this. This uh, side of guitar, which was more than a toy. This is a viola. It was more than a toy, but I wanted to learn. Nobody can teach me a guitar at that time. It was very hard. And let me tell you a little story. In Puerto Rico, at that time, we was having a school of music. It was freedom for some people. But some people in Puerto Rico, there was by area. The area where I live, it was considered to be the worst area. That there was no school of nothing for us. Nothing. The only thing you can learn where I was living is was boxing and baseball. We was good on baseball. We was we was playing baseball, but our father, you know, was playing baseball in his area when he was young, and he went off to be a baseball player. Me and our brother, three of, of us, we playing baseball, and we was good, but it was not interesting uh, sport for us. I was interested in swimming. I was interested uh, to be a runner, but. Yeah, the the trainers at that time, you want to be a runner? What? You want to be a swimmer? You know, it was like, like this is impossible to happen because we don't have nobody teach that in here. I was passionate, patient with the music. So I bought this little guitar, and in the church that I was uh, going, my father was going, they was offering... For all the kids, they're going to give classes of freedom guitar. So they say Sunday after the service, we're going to have a class. So everybody bring the guitar and everybody uh, be able to welcome on the, on the guitar. Well, like I told you, my guitar was a little. I have an echo because I got a violin and I have a viola and they are very very uh, receptive for the noise and making an echo here. But, yes, 
I went over and what the news they give me. Oh no, with that little guitar, no, 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 no. Everybody was having expensive guitar. They was having the big guitars. And actually, I was not able to pay those class of guitar for free in there. And uh, hey, man, you want to hear something? Tell your kid no. And he may probably pay attention of what you say, or he may probably say, no, I'm going to make it no matter what. So, I talked to my dad. I say, you know, they didn't accept me in the, in the school of guitar because my guitar is too little. And I talked to the pastor of the church before I left. And I make a promise to him. I look at his eyes and I say, Hey, you see this little guitar? I'm going to make you a bit that I'm going to learn before everybody here learn guitar. And he looked at me. And I remember his name, Ernesto Carrasquillo. He was a big black man. And he just rubbed the hands on my, on my head. He said, good luck. Well, I went to a school, and there was a man that was, wow, he was one of my heroes. He was playing the guitar. He was leading that guitar like, you know, I was a boy. I was the only person that I met at that time that he was playing good guitar, and there was a tuna in the school. Of course, it was prohibited from uh, the kid that go to church getting a tuna in, in the school because it was not approved. So I joined to the tuna and that was Walter with his guitar. And I talked to Walter, I want to I want to play guitar, you know, I like I like to to to, to get how to you know to get how to manage a guitar myself. And I just bought a little guitar, and I make it in the story. You know, I went to a church by this, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he said, yeah, bring that guitar to school, and I tune it off for you, and I give you some keys, and I give you some way how to, how to start learning the guitar. So, while I was uh, on the tuna, we was playing, and I was next to Walter, and uh, he positioned himself so I can steal the tunes and the position of the finger. Then I talk to him, what is this? And I go into home, and he took me that guitar, but the guitar was so little that it get on tune. But it was not getting on tune. The thing was that every time that I was need to tune the guitar, I took it over him, tune it up, and I was able to practice the songs that we playing on the tuna. Then the pastor find out that was in, I was in the tuna of the school. He came and talked to my dad, Say, no, you know that this is not allowed because the kid is going to take another manners. He's going to take another things. And I jump over him and I say, you know what? I went over with the best intention to learn guitar in this church. But you didn't allow me to do it. Right now, I have learned a lot. And I told you that in three months, probably I will learn more that the student that you have there because it was a good group, and I do it on myself. So Mr. Walter on the school told me to buy a book, and he recommended me a good uh, book, and I read it. It was in Spanish, and I understood what the book wanted to say, and I said, yeah, after this, I start getting all the position of the finger. I start getting the fingering on the, on, the, on the arm, on the guitar, and I copy everything on my brain, man. Boom, 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 boom. Then I was starting to grow up. Some reason my father changed uh, the church, and uh, we went to another church where the pastor, he was the brightest and the smart guy that I ever heard. I was having eleven years, and I started learning trumpet and flute, 
from the school with some friends. And yeah, I was having a big background about air instrument. I was having a big background of guitars. And I just put that background to work on my guitar. And I was having a little cheap flute. And I was playing. And this new pastor came into my house. He was a young pastor. Which he was the most sweet man. The sweet pastor that I ever had. And I came out of school. He said, can I talk to you? I said, sure. And I said, I listened to this man. And uh, he gave me an invitation that week for being on Sunday on the service at night. And he want to show me something. He never told me what. Well, I went that Sunday to church and he sent me in one of the front in the front bench. And he say, you will see something that you will enjoy. Man, suddenly, this guy is starting to come over with air instrument, name it trumpet, clarinet, a drums, a bass, and they play just right in front of me. Actually, I get in love with that band. And uh, after that, everybody was nice, everybody was coming in to me. It was like a different way of, I mean, I was having good people on the school, and they were good, but these people were great, great, great. They, they say, hey, you can come tomorrow to my house, this is the address. And I went over, and I start just right there. Talk about music. Uh, it was my passion. And I did starting to learn trombone, trumpet. And I went to church, I keep going to church until I was able to join into this band. I went to the band about four or five years and I learned a lot. I played bass, I played guitar, I played trombone, I played baritone, uh, the big, uh, look like a tuba. And I play all those instruments for years. But there was a time that I was needing, I was close to get my 16 years, even that I was still doing a shoe shine. And mostly I was getting a, a better job at the airport. I was uh, being a RAM agent in a company that was called Nolp K Airways. And I was offloading airplanes. <laughs> I'm putting load in there, and I made a lot of pilot. They teach me how to fly, and I wanted to be a pilot officially in a flying school because I want to be a pilot for my career. So I was still high way, so I have to leave the band and put the music aside. And uh, yeah, that penitence me in the music for a long time because it took me a lot of years to study uh, pilot. I didn't have the money. So I have to work and work and work to fly an hour of, at that time, uh, of flying time. And uh, yeah, I started to make pile of friends, uh, name it. I was watching car, I was watching airplane. I got a job as uh, in, in a mechanic uh, shop doing uh, cleaning. And once in a while, I was looking at the people working on mechanic until I was able to learn. I was able to, to develop that background of working on engines and working on, on airplane. Always I was asking questions. What is this for? What is this for? And the people was telling me. Of course, it was on Spanish, so we was able to, uh, to understand better. And I started working on airplane for probably 15 years. That helped me a little bit more, and I keep flying until I was having the, the 16 years. I was making my solo fly. I did my uh, my career. Uh, 17 years, I got my first pilot license. It was a private pilot, and it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It was an achievement of a goal. Uh, of a dream that you had and then I went from there and it was amazing 
So I keep working those 15 years until I get my commercial a multi-engine, and then I went for flying. I went for a job for flying. I needed a different, different story, but I always have my guitars in my house. What happened, guys? The place where I was living, there was, in Puerto Rico, it was no penitence that you can play any instrument in the street. So every Saturday, uh, everybody cleaned the house, everybody cleaned the cars, everybody, you know, have everything set up. And about 2 to 30, you hear a conga. The conga. That sound of a conga travels the way out, the way, way, way out. By the way, at the beginning, the Indian, they were having a, a conga tambores, and they was calling the Indian, and they were sending message with the conga, because especially in the United States where those big hills make an echo, they was living in the, in the country, and they were sounding a conga, and they was, that sound was traveling miles and miles away. And they were able to hear that conga, and they were able to reply, another Indian on the other side, and that was a way of communication. So where I was living, the way of communication on Saturday, and let me tell you something, Puerto Rico, we do a party for anything. So at that time, we was calling a rumbón. So a rumbón is... A little party that you make from nothing. You have a conga, you have somebody with a guitar, you have somebody with a trumpet, you have somebody with a trombone, and the people get together and they starting to play. At that time, I was now over the, my probably 15, uh, 16, 17 years, and we was going to that rumbón and we take the guitar. And yeah, I, I, I learned a lot of guitar for that time so I can be playing in public and uh, we was there and uh, you know party in Puerto Rico you can do a party a happy birthday you can do any any party on your house and you start with the food you have you start with the beer you have and once the people I mean we're talking about the the, the early 70 the up to the 90s, it was that way. So everybody joins together to that party. And uh, yes, they, they, they get together and the party start long hours, long hours. And everybody happy, everybody singing, the food was coming in, the beer was coming in. Refreshment was coming in, and everybody was happy. Everybody was was there like uh, we know each other. People that come from other places, they get an instrument, they play with us. And it was very amazing. Today, for good or for bad, everything has changed. Because if you go outside with the instrument and you start joining people in the, in the corner of your house, Probably the police in the United States will come and shut you down. I don't know why, because any instrument will not do so no, much noise to get people out of licking or get people out of uh, out of uh, control. Some people do, some people don't. But it was the way we raised up. I was having. The anxious, I was having the the patience to have a violin. I have 35 years, can I purchase this violin? At the beginning, eh, after the background of, of the music that I have, I learned to read music. Uh, I learned to read partitures. And, uh, well, right now I cannot do it because my eyes don't allow me. The practice have to be every day, and I cannot do it. But 
I put this violin the first time that I, the first year that I was there, I, it was like I couldn't get anything. I couldn't get anything on this violin. Never took a lesson of, of a violin, but yeah, it took me a lot of years to make sound on them, especially tuning the violin. And scaling, and you don't know how hard it is when you don't have a teacher. Now, you have kids. Baby kids, baby girls, baby men, that they are going to be men and women totally sometime in the, in the future. Now, on the 90s, start coming the the videos of gaming on computers remember the the candy was having uh, some gaming and uh, there was some computer uh, intruders I think it was one of the first game I used to be a pilot at that time and I used to come out of the plane start playing the, that video game it was good 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 on, on, on the intruders and uh, I was took uh, a class for somebody was uh, having a public computer, and we was going there. We even was stealing the games out of the computer just by by clicking the the cable on the wall on the on the on the wall jack, and we was having the the computer open for us with ton of game and we was playing. But because I was a pilot, every time I do a game, I was running to that computer. And then after that, I was going like this. I was going fly like this, and I realized that the computer was putting me in a source of humor that I can't even fly the plane. And I was all shaking. And I said, I gotta quit this. So I did. And uh, yes, then the computer came on 2000 much better and uh, more stable. And I did a uh, flight simulator on computer. Uh, that was good. It was like a game the first day. Now the flight simulator is totally professional. It's just uh, a, 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 a huge game. I did a helicopter on uh, pipes that it flies uh, just like uh, like a rear helicopter. If you don't know how to fly a helicopter, you cannot jump on that when I put the program on, on the computer because I bought a, a, a video card down in Canada and I select everything and I did the whole cable, I put the whole instrument that I use on the computer, and, and I put, I did a box with all the control of the helicopter because I fly helicopter, and I was using that helicopter. I made my own control on the helicopter, and I put servo on them. And it is, it is just like, like flying a rear the helicopter in the flight simulator. Today, it gotta be more, more expert because I'm talking about 2000. And I went over the last last flight simulator is about 2009. But I'm not here to talk about computer. But the most important of the computer that today they have video games. Video games where all the kids are raising up. And most of the games talking about wars, killing, and... Uh, Doing games that uh, the kid would learn, yes, some kids are mastered, but what happened that goes into the, your brain, and you have a kid that is growing up, and that I don't think is the best idea to have kids learning how to shoot guns, le learning how to kill person, because that will were a, a, a word word yeah you a parent you a dad you a mom i'm a dad too i got tens because i got two daughters and they are grateful yeah i don't think they they uh have do anything wrong while raising the sons they have uh I don't want to talk about that, but yeah, even that I grateful for for them. Yeah, it is it is the way it is, 
And uh, you have to educate your kids in such a way that they, now, they not stupid, but they can be remaining humble when they have to be humble and do what they have to do in order to be a better human being. If you teach them videos about to kill person, yeah, that video will record into the main brain and that will stay forever. So, I encourage you guys, it is very expensive. It is very freedom in some of the places that we live in the United States, uh, especially Massachusetts, give the kids in third grade a little violin so they can go over and they give them a very principal background. Now, playing a violin is not easy. They require a, a cost. Yeah, if you go in a private school, they require a cost. Playing a guitar is the same. It's not easy, but the computers today, we have a lot of people giving classes, even for free, on guitars, violin, uh, piano, on drums. Uh, you can search on the internet all those type of lessons, and you can encourage your kids to do something in benefit of themselves when they grow up. What benefits on themselves when they grow up? Okay, there was a bar in Puerto Rico that uh, it was open all, every day and uh, this man was smart enough and he had all kind of instruments, tune up. Okay, what the human have? What the human being have? When you drunk, you wanna show up. So everybody get there and we was doing a, 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 a rumbon. Yeah, many people get very serious, especially bankers, a doctor that goes uh, to a bar, they go, you know, they don't want them, nobody to know that they are doctor. But yeah, sometimes they come in with a group of doctors together. And some of them, after they get in a two, three shot of rum, then they take the instrument they play and they join to the room bone at 11 o'clock, 12 at night, we're having a whole orchestra in there. I have seen many videos, and you can be agree or you can be disagree of what I said. If you search the internet, you can see a lot of old person. There is an old, old guy on, on Florida that he has given concert in a piano. And you look, this man is very old. Like me, probably big bear, and he's uh, a homeless guy. And today we having the opportunity of most of the places, uh, airport, and most of the places they have a piano. And uh, the people come, whoever like, uh, they go there and play whatever they want. And they join a, a group of people that listen to that and, and they go. All right. I remember one time I saw a man with a cello. And I used to go and see him every Sunday. Every Sunday he was going to a plaza. And uh, he played, he do a concert of, yeah, many songs and when you see somebody playing his instrument and he goes alone, you can find out that, yeah, there is, there is thing that, that may happen that you don't have control. And these guys, sometimes they go to a plaza and they do a concert and they have a lot of people coming in to see the concert and they make it by themselves. But what happened? The music is international. The partitures that the musician read is international. You can be Virgin Island playing whatever instrument you play in the partitures, and you come to the United States and you can play the same music. You can go to Japan 
you can go to Russia, and they have an orchestra in there, you have a partitude, you know how to read, and you know how to play an instrument, and yes, sometimes you can join. Okay, let me tell you something. When the people do a parade, when the people do a, a, a big parade, like the Festival of Flowers, the Festival of Flowers, they use students, but in some parade uh, that they were make it, you just had to have an instrument and know how to read music. And these people get there and uh, they just read whatever paper they, they put in front of them. And that's why the music on the parade, that you see a big orchestra some, sometime uh, playing there and it's not the National Guard, it's not the U.S. Forces Band, and it's not the, it's a, a event that is created by the people that know how to play instrument and do and they do a parade. Uh, these people get there and they play. Uh, you can go anywhere in the world if you know how to read partitude, and this is not forgettable. Once you learn how to do it, and you know how to uh, how to read a music with an instrument, you can read the music with whatever instrument you have, as long as you know the keyboard, as you know the scaling of your key of the instrument you play, and if you know that, you can follow any partitude and play any word in the world. What I say with this, okay, if you got your kids involved in music, they will appreciate that because everywhere they go, they have that patient passion for the music. They can take the instrument and they can do group. I have do a lot of travel with a guitar or without a guitar, and I have found that somebody have a music and there is a guitar available, or there is one of the instruments that I play, I go and join. And the satisfaction that you have, because you learn, is so great. Even, I have 67 years. And what I coming from, okay, if I see today a kid uh, in the early 60s, that was the people of the Beatles. And everybody like to play a guitar. We don't have no guitar. We didn't have money to do a guitar. You know what we do? We just get a, a piece of long wood and we just have a, a little board we shape it like the way we want it. We nail it there. We put three nylon uh, uh, a string of uh, fishing rod, and we just play like the beaters. That was bitter mania on that, on, that, on that era, on the 60s. And we was having a lot of fun playing the song of the beaters with a, with a guitar that not even have a sound. It just, it just was fake, and it was just a, a, a kind of a game. But... If I ever see a guy, a little kid, that way, if I cannot give him a, a, a guitar, if I cannot give him a, a classes how to tune up a guitar, I will get that piece of wood modified in order that he can play the guitar. And when he have a, a good brass, bass, the brass, that you can, that he can, you know, have that that piece of wood tuning with six string he can position his finger and at least he will have a sound but today there is many people they have many instruments at home there is a lot of kids around the world they are willing to play music they are willing to have somebody teach them they willing even that they have they willing they don't have internet they don't have a phone connection. Even that is very hard today because everybody have a phone and everybody is connected to the internet and everybody can go and search for whatever they want. But yes, what they doing? Doing the, the thing that even they are for adults or they have sex related videos that you cannot teach on your kid. And always the human being is going to come over finding what is not allowed. You know, we have that and nobody can change it. This is not, this is not the era 
It could be a case from the 40s. It could be a case from the, the from the 2000s. But we always want to to look at the prohibited things. That is a human nature. But if you encourage your kid and you educate your kid the correct way, I don't telling you how to educate your kid. I'm sorry. If you if you think that I pretending to to tell you how to educate your kid, no, 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 no. I don't saying that. But if you, you are not a musician, but something that, that doesn't need a language because the music doesn't need, need a language. You can play music on Japan as well as China, Russia with the partitures and doesn't have a language. It doesn't have, hey, you have to read this first. The music, when you have a partiture, tells you what you play, what you play second, what you play third, what you play last, and what is the final. So if you have a kid that you can educate that way, remember we are not here forever. I'm going to go. You guys are going to go too, sooner or later. But your kids, my kids, the kids of my kids will stay in this planet. Yeah, we're talking about the... The climate's uh, thing, but if you play music and you go to any place, and if we can go back to what is safe, what it is uh, great for, for your ear, and you have heat that goes in any corner of where we live, at least for one hour, you get a group of kids, you get a group of music, you get a group of whatever, the people come from everywhere, and we have an hour of playing during the day, and I think they will make a big change, not only in the United States, not only in Puerto Rico, not only in China, not only in Japan, around the world, it will make a big change, because everybody will turn to listen to the music and you can be frustrated you can be down you can be name it you can be drowsy if you want to be drowsy and you put a music and you have a good music that plays good to your ear and this is a behavioral change what a behavioral chain, a behavioral chain is the skill that every teacher used to teach everyone. Why? Because the first thing when, when you're trying to teach somebody, there is an obligation to say no. There is a, an opinion of somebody, ah, he will not do that, you know, and that is a negative action. But today's schools, they are getting encouraged about the music. They are getting encouraged about teaching uh, kids how to manage the behavior with an instrument. And yeah, once they get to this instrument, you could see plenty of videos, kids playing pianos, kids playing any kind of an instrument, and they put them on YouTube. They put them in the internet, they put them on Facebook, they put them everywhere. When they, these kids grow up, regardless if they play professional or not, they know the instrument. This is just like running a bicycle. You learn to run a bicycle, you fall down a couple of times, you crash your skin for good, and you say, I will never ride a bicycle, but you could have 80 years and you never forget about riding uh, a bicycle. On my own, I ride a bicycle and I ride a unicycle. And uh, I remember one day I was in a party, in, in a big party on San Juan, and there was somebody making a show with a unicycle. There was a ton of people there, and I yelled the guy, hey, I know how to do that too. And he was surprising. Everybody with whatever he's, he, he, he come. And the guy called me over to the, to the platform where he was making a show. He said, you know how to write this? I said, sure. 
Every people believed that I was part of a show. I was not part of the show at that time. So I took the only cycle and I ran the same way that the guy do. I did a lot of crazy things myself. I was younger, of course. And I uh, rode all the only cycle he had. He was having a big one. He was having a little tiny one. And he was having a medium one. So I make a show with a guy and they offered me a job that you know, I didn't want to take because I was a pilot already. And this was part of my infant race stop, and I learned how to buy unicycle. I do have that unicycle. Um, uh, I had it on a storage. They brand new. And in summers, I get one of those out, and I go and run around here, and I have 67 gear. Come on. And that is unforgettable. I have fish. Before, in Massachusetts, just right here, a lot of kids learn how to ride unicycle because I teach them. And I was able to, to get them up in a new cycle. So there was people that couldn't buy a unicycle, and I bought them a unicycle, little one, and they was riding unicycle. They never forget about that. These old men give me a unicycle, and I rode it. And these kids are going to be growing up. If I could do that with the music, yes, I would do it. So I came in Massachusetts, and I was trying to buy a cello, but I couldn't find a good cello. I couldn't find a cello that my pocket can afford. And I bought a viola. So yes, it's the same thing of the violin. I'm not a viola, I'm not a violinist, but when I want to play, I just go and sit and I play what I want to play. I can get music out of them because my experience on music, I can get the music that I want. I'm just telling you what I can do with the viola, what I can do with the violin. I can play, but I'm not a professional player. I need a lot more. I need a lot more to be a violinist. Yeah, I can play a guitar, good. I can play a piano, good. I can play a sax. I can play a trumpet, I can play, yeah, I say I can play, I used to play, I was fluently on those instruments, today I'm not, because, yeah, once you raised up, once you have compromise, once you have to work, once you have to do the principal thing that we have to all do in the house, you don't have a time for this, but, when you ever remember and you feel relaxed, you want to play a little bit of what you know, you can go ahead and do it. But yes, in the United States, we don't do like we used to do in Puerto Rico. We just get in a corner and bring you an instrument and, and get some people there and get somebody that can sing and we just can follow them and the people do. i sure that Mexico is doing that. Mexico, I, I guess that the, the people, the mariachis, are starting in the corner and they got a ton of people because they can get somebody that sing all the time. I think Cuba does a, a lot of things. And by the way, I have converted two guitars on, uh, on a Cuban uh, tree. Well, they don't sound in good, but I come in with this because I have met some people in the internet. I did a repair of one of those guitars on December, uh, what, 10 years, 20, uh, 10 to 15 years ago in Massachusetts. The bridge of the guitar fell down and I didn't have nobody. It was the only guitar that, that I had on Massachusetts at that time. Uh, I paid $6 on a, on a yard sale. My wife did. Uh, pay six dollars and she bring this guitar and I use the guitar for good but suddenly the bridge blow away I say I gotta put this bridge back so I have to to get the bridge back and the guitar get on glue on the side very bad very bad so I sand it and I glue it back again the guitar is still playing then I convert it into a, a Cuban 3 because I wanted to learn Cuban 3 and Cuban 3 costs a lot of money so I learned how to play the the cuatro from Puerto Rico 
and I have a cuatro, I don't have it here, just right now, and I he learned how to play the cuatro from Venezuela, which is fourth string, and I think Mexico used that cuatro too, it's a fourth string guitar, and they, they do amazing, and actually the cuatro from Venezuela, a guitar, and a cuatro from Puerto Rico, they make a good sound. I was living in Florida, Puerto Rico, and uh, the teacher of uh, the high school was having a band of cuatros, and I played with my Venezuelan cuatro there. Actually, I give my cuatro. I used to have a Venezuelan cuatro. I give it to her, and I give her the manual, and I guess that uh, she's still playing that cuatro because it was very easy to do it, and it was making a very good sound when you're playing with the Puerto Rican cuatro. Just to let you know, the Venezuelan people and the Puerto Rican, that the cuatro from Venezuela make a good music. I did prove it already. And Mrs. Lucy, if she's alive uh, on uh, Florida, Puerto Rico, she can tell you because I give my cuatro to her. But going back, when you feel alone and you remember the whole music, yeah, with, with violin you can play all type of music. Contemporary, regular music, you can play classical music, uh, you can do rock, you can do whatever with a violin. Yeah, you just have to have the will and you just have to have the practice to do it. So, I don't tell you guys to get your, your kids and enroll them to play violin. No, no. Enroll them in music. They can like... Uh, if they like trumpet, if they like trombone, if they like uh, alpha, if they like a violin, a viola, a cello, let them, encourage them to play, help them. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive to buy an instrument that plays good. Uh, actually, I bought this uh, violin 35, 36 years ago. This is not the best violin that you can purchase. It was a very cheap violin at that year. At that year, it was a super gang. It was a nice price. It was 190 something dollars. I even have the, the ticket somewhere in there. 36 years ago, I paid about $200 for this violin. Today, Few years ago, I took this violin to a store. They offered me a thousand dollars for it, and it's not it's not a best violin. You can see how that violin sounds. It's not, it's not a good violin. The viola is an Stradivari. Uh, I see that uh, he got a number there, but I can see it. But it's a good viola. I pay almost four hundred dollars. <laughs> I just need practice, I just need to get back on them so I can play, but you never forget the music. Once you know the fingerboard notes and the sound that the viola produces, it will be very fine. Now, I'm sorry I don't try to tell you how to grow up your kids. It's not, this is not for that. But we all like to play video games. I don't, I don't do it because I, I hate that, that kind of system. But today, you have a kid, five, six, seven years, they want to play video games. Every time you buy a card for a video game, it costs you 
costs you what? Money. For video game, costs you a lot of money. A lot of money to have a kid enroll on video game. It is a lot of money. Well, why don't we? Sorry, I don't want to encourage you to change your, the way you raise your kid. No, 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 no. It's not the way. But if you buy an instrument, you can have violins for $49. You can have good guitars for less than $100. Even that. In the United States, you can purchase any instrument in any yard sale for peanuts. Well, why don't you go there sometime when you see a yard sale or there is an instrument, you know, let's think about the kids. Let's think about, about tomorrow. Don't think about today. Yeah, because we, we, we purchase video games and that video game doesn't teach anything. Just how to shot people, how to, how to do not the best thing on the world because those kids are going to encourage and they are going to believe that what they've been teaching is the best for tomorrow life. But for sure, for sure, if you get your kids in roll of music and your kid learn how to play the instrument with a talibur Talabarcher or with a party tour, uh, both of them, they are very easy to play once you get enrolled to them and you can play any music. They can go anywhere around the world. And guys, this is going to be not penitent you for life. Yeah, it will penitent you when you kid come and say, I need a, a, a better instrument. But as well as you say, no. On the video games, no, you're going to keep playing with that game until I got money to do it. You can say that. And they have to play $200 violin. I won't give it to you for no price. There is no price that I can give this violin. And there is a lot of things that it got to be fixed on this violin. And now i learning more. And i trying to do my own violin. What? Yes, I try to do my, my own violin, and I use the wrong wood because the wood is very expensive. The wood is very expensive to buy in wood, and the wood had to be purchased dry. This wood is not dry. What I mean, wood dry, okay, I show you. These are going to be the top of maple. You see, I start carving so I can make the top of them. I start carving. I have to cut this wood and make it. Yeah, I got a little time to play, to play with this. I'm not an instrument maker, but it is not, it is not a science. It is not hard to learn, but let me tell you something. I have heard about videos about people that make violins and cellos, and I get surprised. There was not a school how to make a violin anywhere in Puerto Rico. There was not a school how to craft wood in Puerto Rico on my racing time. There was not a school of nothing in Puerto Rico. That why I'm not a professional player on this. No excuse. No excuse. I know I know penitence myself because even that I got the sound that I want to take out of this violin. I get the sound that I want to take in any one of my on my instrument. I have sax, I have a flute, I have 30 guitars and I have two other guitars that I converted in uh, Cuban 3 that they don't sound good and I found out 
Kings, to Rosa Guitars, uh, is somebody that I have on the internet. And I do have uh, how to make a violin uh, video on my post. If you can see that uh, and go from there. Yeah, this word somehow is, is got to get better. And I think the music would do everything. Anyone can do music. Anyone can write song. And I going to tell you something. Uh, on the 70s, the, the rap came into, into the generic uh, music. And yeah, it changed a little bit the time and it changed a little bit the, the way that the songs playing today. Uh, before that, it was a romantic where you can get two, three guitars and do boleros with an eye music that was doing in Mexico. Mexico still doing that. And Mexico give all the pancho, give us uh, a, a lot of trials that uh, they went over Puerto Rico and induced us to the Mexican music and do us to the bolero. And there is nobody made centering. In Mexico, they do it. In Puerto Rico, I don't think nobody do, go with a trio and, and, and be romantic trying to get uh, in love with some kind of a woman that you want to see your relation. That is not happening anymore. Any more romanticisms around the world. But we can always change that. We can go back. It's the best. Uh, there is nobody here. I, I, I can put that on doubt that take uh, a, go to a supermarket or go to any uh, uh, a flower shop and bring flower to the lady you love. It could be your wife. It could be your daughter. It could be uh, the neighbor. It could be uh, your teacher. It could be whatever. But guys, a few years ago, I used to go on a Sunday to Price Shoppers, buy 15, 20 roses, and everywhere I was making a stop, there was a, a lady, I was giving her flowers. Hey, you want to have a different feeling? Do that. Do that. And don't comment this video. This video is going to be posted in, in, my, in my internet, in my YouTube. If you want to try to do that, go buy two, three flowers, go anywhere in the, in, in the place, in the neighborhood, and give a flower to a lady. You will see lady crying. You will see lady getting astonished. They're getting surprised because somebody's giving them a flower. And you will hear this. I haven't got a flower in years. In years. So... If we start changing this instead of showing our kids how to shoot a gun, yeah, we may probably have a better world. We may probably have a different world that, that may work for you, may work for me, may work for the future kid. Music is music, no matter what instrument you play. If you can read Talaverger, or you can read uh, uh, the whole uh, system of music, no matter what instrument you play, you can go anywhere in the world. <laughs> I, I love him because Puerto Rican musicians, they used to have a federation of music in Puerto Rico. And before you can play any music, you have to belong to a federation of music of Puerto Rico. I remember I was trying to get in professional music, my own. And uh, yes, I received one time a letter. You know, they're going to select some musician for a show is coming up. I don't remember what was the show. So I went to, to this place and uh, uh, probably we was about 100 trombone in that place. And uh, they, gave you, they gave you the partitur. You go and read it, and you play with your instrument, and there was somebody listening to it, and if you make a mistake, uh, probably it was all right because it was the first time you're reading the partitures, but no, they have a selection 
one trombonist, and they select out of a hundred. So you know that you are not going to be forming part, and we were paying a lot of the, a lot of money yearly to be in the Federation of Music of Puerto Rico at that time. So I don't know how they work now because I say we're never going to be a part of Federation of Music no more because it was not paid just just to have a right that you can go to any place and, and, and play music. But if you go to Canada, if you go to Bahamas, if you go to anywhere in the world, the music is what join the whole world. You can go anywhere and if you keep or yourself, you can play music and you go to China or you go to Japan or you go to Korea or you go name it to any place in the world and you see a band and, and you see extra instrument, you can probably get together if you can know how to read uh, partition as well as you kit. That will never change. That is self-explanatory partition or telebarcher. And yes, today the internet teaches you a lot. And doesn't mean that your kid has to quit playing video games because they're gonna always gonna keep playing the video games. Even if you teach them how to do it, or if they teach them by yourself, they're gonna go and play the video games. The only thing that I say they could be educated games up to a little point where he get the aggression. When they get the aggression, that is not good. Not good for you, not good for me, not good for anybody in the world, not good for your kids. The aggression is something that we all naturally have. Anyone can be aggressive at any point of their life. But if we're going to feed that aggression, the kids are going to grow up with that aggression. But if you teach them how to play, if you teach them or you encourage how, to, how do they can play an instrument with everything and have a teacher, they will never penitence you. They will remember you did one of the best things in life was enroll them music. Guys, I wish that this video will fit to anyone that have kids or for yourself. Uh, you don't need to spend tons of money that it used to be on the 60, on the 70. And they was great people that they were to a magic school uh, and they paid tons of money to be a professional musicians. But thanks God to the internet, thank God to the to the computer, there are plenty of people. They start making a rap. And yeah, they was having rims, digital rims in there that they can do music. And there was some people that they are amazing, Daddy Yankee. Uh, a lot of people have made uh, taking advantage of these programs to be professional. Yeah, at the beginning it was very, very weird with what they was writing, but yes, today the, we can hear about everything, good word, bad word, uh, and everybody is doing what they have to do. And the internet also have made these people to become somebody. Somebody with money, somebody broke, somebody with whatever, but they learn. I have a whole story of of, uh, of recording because I was having a lot of songs that I record with my instrument and music. Somebody hacked my computer, destroyed the hard disk. So I had the, the songs and it was a lot of problem doing music. And after you do the music, somebody destroyed the music. I was not... That was not good, so I got everything out of the computer. But music is going around the world, and it's only one. It's international. No matter if you're a Christian, no matter if you're a Catholic, no matter if you're a Presbyterian, 
no matter what religion you are, music is international. And nobody should tell you what music to play. Because as well you can put a Christian uh, lyric on any music, anybody can put any kind of a lyric. Yeah, maybe approved, maybe not approved by the by the owner of the music, but yes, it's music. Music is music and goes all around the world. And you can hear contemporary music in the United States as well. You can hear contemporary music out of the other world. Russia, China, uh, Japan, uh, uh, name it, anywhere. And you can hear the same music here while you're eating your famous food. As well, you can eat it in China in a restaurant and you can hear the same music and it's the same music internationally listened by everyone by every one of us so my best thing is telling you guys get to music uh, not even if you are not a musician not even if you don't know how to play a conga if you don't know how to play a drum, if you don't know how to play a bass, if you don't know how to play a violin, if you don't know how to play anything. But there is some more. Let me, let me tell you before I leave. There is a lot of people that they have instruments on the house. They're not touching them. they not uh, use them. The people that use them uh, probably die and they have just... Uh, emotional out of those instruments but they don't fix it they don't do anything there are plenty of people that need at least an instrument if you have an instrument that you don't use that is broken that is uh, disabled by somebody there is plenty of people that repair instrument donate it donate it so this instrument can be rebuilt or fixed and uh, they can give it to uh, people that actually need them. And uh, they can uh, probably learn how to play the instrument you have on your house for years. And we are getting old. And we are not using it. And uh, Rosa, I know you do a good repair shop down there in, uh, in uh, Atlanta. I think it is where you are. And uh, there is a lot of other people in New Hampshire that uh, they fix instrument. I fix it my own. So if somebody have something, I can fix a guitar. I just trying to get on violin, trying to fix them. And uh, thank you to Rosa. And uh, I got a Japanese guy also that, that goes on my account. Let me see if I can find him. Okay, I have a playlist on my, on my account that you guys can come and tune it up. Uh, and you have, uh, no, you have, uh, you have, uh, you have violins, you have, uh, a different videos, how to make violins and how to make things. And you can use this page and you can go in there on my playlist. And guys, I hope everyone can see this video. And this video can help anyone. And if this, this video may help you doing something better, just I want you guys to give me a thumb up. And I appreciate that. I'm sorry that I'm getting out of the hunting today. Even that I have $400 here for hunt later on. I wanted to do this video and post it that this video can go everywhere and i hope you guys can share this video with every of your contacts if you could do that you can pass in all what i mean for the music music can change the world there is no politic there is no religion there is nobody music is international and the music, as well as you like the music, the people on the other side of the world, they love it. So if we can play, because the music has no language, 
the music has just a paper written that if you know how to read it, you can join with the people out there on the world, at the end of the world, or with uh, the people in Africa, with the people in everywhere, and if we get together. That is not politic, that is not religion, that is not nothing. That is just music that make a, a, a good smile on your heart. Guys, thank you to listen to my video. I hope you can share this video. And if this video can go around the world, you make a good help for everybody. Not only me. There is people that need this video. And I hope you guys can understand that and share this video with whatever you want on your contact list. Thank you all. Ismael Rosado, Milo Transportation, forward last moneda, forward last coin. Talking to a different uh, subject today. Thank you, guys.